very good morning to Madam Razi, our lecturer for DJJ 40173 Engineering Design. Today, me and my teammates will be presenting about engineering design. We continue presenting. Firstly, I would like to introduce myself and my teammates. My name is Jude Elvin Jolip, and my teammates are Stephen Sivir Jr., Barnabas David, and Jeldan Isaac George. Firstly, the engineering design. Define the meaning of design. So, design is a process of rational decision making in which problems are considered, solutions are sought, and best solution in accordance with scope required is chosen. In engineering, design is the creation of a plan of or convention for the construction of an object or system to satisfy a specified need or to solve a problem. If the plan results in the creation of a physical reality, the product must be functional, safe, dependable, competitive, usable, manufacturable, and marketable. Design is also is a creative and interactive process. It is also a process of decision making. Decisions sometimes be made with insufficient information, sometimes with just the right amount of information and sometimes with an evidence of partially co contradictory information. The types of design at the moment there is some confusion about the definition of the term design. To the general public, design is thinking as divine as the ability to create a technical invention. This is the type of invention necessitates the use of materials and tools such as sheet metals, plastic, saw, drills, and so on. There are two kinds of design. A. Concrete design that result in real-world objects such as car, jet fighters, submarines, and so on. B. Design generate abstract concepts as, such as strategy, tactic, procedures, and regulation. Thanks to my friend, Jude. So my name is Gerald and Isaac George and my number matrix is 707 DKM 21F1053. So the first one is 1.2, the designing process. How does the design process work? How does it start? Does the engineer just slouch down at, at a desk with a blank piece of paper and scribble some ideas down? What occurs next? What element influence or regulates the choice that must, must be made? How does the design process culminate finally? Identification of a need and the decisions to act on it marks and beginning of the process. The process culminates with the presentation of the plans for addressing the requirement after numerous revisions. Several design paths may be repeat throughout the life of the product. From conception to termination, depending on the nature of the design work, we will look in more detail at these milestones in the process in the following few subsections. The engineering design process is a lengthy and intricate interactive process. As a result, the design process cannot be thought of as a straightforward one-way process. For this point, sufficient and typically streamlined design process will proceed in the same manner. Even it will ultimately produce results that are considered ably different at a later level. So next we move to the 1.2.1 explain the primary need. So usually begins with the design phase because the need may merely be a general dissatisfaction, a niece or intuition that something wrong. Recognizing the need and expressing it frequently compress a highly creative endeavor. Often, there is absolutely no proof of the requirement. For example, 
customer may have trouble locating your store because there are no direction signs next you don't have a place to keep pens and pencils so they get lost or break just when you need them so the next is 1.2.2 define the definition of problem more detail and it must contain all the requirements for the intended item the input and output numbers the qualities and dimensions of the space the object must inhabit and the res restrictions on these quantities are all included in the specifications speeds fits temperature restrictions a maximum range anticipated variation in the variable as well as dimension and weight restriction can be all specified the basic requirements service terms and financial restriction for the product that will be manufactured are laid forth in the specification this stage for specification is crucial and the su success of the design will be influenced by a correctly craft specification so we move to the important fundamental topics are so the first one is are the requirements is least sufficient does the issue being raised actually exist are the state needs genuinely need and they are fundamental requirement will user or consumer have any issues using the design's outcome to guarantee the design of better outcome there are numerous extra issues that must be taken into account identify or analyze in the issue is typically more concerns with information gathering and processing at the end is to characterize the issue in depth the optimum solution can then be provided by it so we move to the 1.2.3 describe the analysis process we have mentioned the reiterated the fact that design is an iterative process in which we move through several process assess the outcome and go back to the initial stage of the process as a result we synthesize a few system components evaluate and improve them and then go back to synthesis observe how this affect the remaining system component consideration must be given to the design and selection of each individual component such as gears bearings and shaft when designing a system to transmit electricity for instance however as the often in the case in design these components are not independent in order to design the shaft for stress and def deflection it is necessary to know the ap applied force if the force are transmitted through gear it is necessary to know the gear specification in order to determine for the force that will transmit it to the shaft but stock gears come with certain bore size requiring knowledge of the necessary shaft diameter so all of the solution were invest investigated assessed and compared in order to select the best option we must build or devise abstract models to system that will permit some kind of mathematical analysis in order to so we move to the 1.2.4 describe the synthesis process the concept invention or concept design are other names for synthesis the synthesis task first and most crucial pairs is this it is necessary to analyze quantify and purpose various themes using recognized metrics analyze must be carried out as the theme is developed to determine whether the system performance 
is adequate or better and if adequate how well it will perform so last but not least is 1.2.5 explain the systematic process of comparison and ev evaluation the final most important presenting step in the design process is conveying the design to others many great design inventions and creative work has been lost to posterity simply because the organizers were unable or, or unwilling to explain their accomplishment to others it is crucial stage in the entire design process evaluation the conclusive indicator of success design typically entails laboratory testing of a prototype so here we're looking to see if the design <coughs> really satisfy the needs is it reliable will it compete successfully with similar product it is economical to manufacture and to use is it easily maintained and adjusted can a prof profit be made from its sale or use or likely it is to result in product liability lawsuits is insurance easily and cheaply obtained is it likely that recalls will be need to replace defective parts of system so that's all from me thank you I will pass to my friend now okay thank you 1.3 the design consideration explain the economic and production factor the engineering economic is concerned the systematic evolution of the benefit and cost of project involving engineering design and analysis engineering economic quantifies the benefit and cost associating with the engineering product to determine if they save enough money to warrant their capital investment a position within the scope of price quality b number in debt required c cost of capital d cost of operation or manufacturing identify the code and standard used in design a standard is a set of specification for part materials or process that aim for uniformity, efficiency, and a certain level of quality. One of the most important function of a standard is to limit the number of items in the specification in order to maintain a reasonable inventory of tooling size, shapes, and varieties. A code is a set of specification for something analysis, design, manufacture, and construction. A code purpose is to achieve a certain level of safety, efficiency, and performance or quality. Explain the safety and product liability. According to this concept, the manufacturer of an article is liable for any damage or harm caused by a defect, and it makes no difference whether the manufacturer was aware of the defect or could have been aware of it. Assume an article was manufactured said 10 years ago and suppose that at the time the article could not have been deemed defective on the basis of all technology knowledge available at the time good energy engineering in analysis and design quality control and comprehensive testing procedure are the best approach to prevent product liability the engineering staff should carefully review this statement to eliminate excessive promise and to include adequate warnings and instruction for use appropriate design consideration when designing product a size or dimension b weight c rigidity d characteristic e ergonomics f security feature g the factor of safety h use 1.4. The ergonomic factors in design. Ergonomics is the human factor in engineering. Derived from two Greek words, nomoi, meaning natural laws, and ergon, meaning work. Hence, ergonomics study human capabilities in relationship to work demands. 1.4.1. 1. 
define the ergonomic in relationship between human and machine. It is the research of human-machine interactions. The majority of products needs to interact with human in some way. People occupy a space within or near the design and they could serve as a sensor, power source, or control element. People can tell, for instance, if an automobile's air conditioning system is keeping the interior at a pleasant temperature. These elements serve as the foundation for a design's ergonomics or human considerations. If the design works for the users, it can be said to be a successful design solution. Every person using a power tool needs a handle that fits their hand. The instrument must not be overly heavy or unwieldy to be handled by users of all size. 1.4.2 Explain the relationship of basic ergonomic between human and machine. Increased muscular tension is required to support the head in a tilt position, which results increased force. The truth is that the most frequent cause of job in injuries are overexertion, falls, and repetitive motion injuries. Each year, improper lifting results in average of 125,000 back injuries. Tiny rips in the muscles and scarring from overuse contribute to inflammation and muscle stiffness. What can be done to stop this? Before repeat, stationary or extended exercise. Warm up and stretch every 20 to 30 minutes. Switch up any prolonged posture by taking periodic rest. Respect painful positions or quit the unpleasant action. Know the early warning signals of an inflammatory process. Use a copy holder and avoid repeatedly bending your neck. Forward. Remember, quadruple the effort. 1.4.3 The target users of our design A. Design for body and human movement Ergonomic factors to be considered are Size, hands and fingers Second, movement, comfort to reach equipment And the third, vision, which is easily visible or recolor Next, sound, touch, odor, taste Temperature. B. Design for safety, sharp edges, stability, fire electricity, guard materials, or toxic. Design for growth and design for increasing age, childhood, youth, and old people. Design for the needs of disabled and elderly. Mental disability, physical, and emotional. E. Design for vision, color, and lighting. Thank you Barnabas for the 1.4 subtopic presentation and let's move on to the next subtopic which is me. Before I start, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Stephen Sibir Jr. and my matrix number is 07DKM21F1055. Let's move on to the first subtopic. Um, 1. Factors in material selection for designing process. An appropriate Materials should be meet many basic criteria including efficient manufacturability, performance, reliability, non-degradability, and recyclability. Here are some factors in material selection for designing process. The first one is stress experienced by component. The next one is hot core. And following one is high temperature. The next one is chemical action and performance. And the last one is price. Let's move on to the next subtopic, which is 1.5.1, which is the list type of material and describing the material properties. The first one is aluminium. Aluminium is widely used for structural and mechanical application. It is a lightweight material and good corrosion resistance, and it is also easy to form. The next one is zinc alloy. Zinc alloy containing aluminium and a small amount of magnesium, high stress and hardness, Excellent electrical conductivity, it is a high thermal conductivity and also a high dimensional accuracy and stability. The next one is titanium. Titanium is a good corrosion resistant material. It is also a high strength to weight ratio. 
and it has a low density and it's ductile which is easy to bend and the next one is high melting point the next material is copper copper is high electrical conductivity and is it also a good corrosion resistance and is but it has a low strength material the next one is brass brass is a resistance to corrosion to salt water it is have a very excellent mechanability and it's a uh, yellow brass contains about 30 percent of more zinc and the other red brass contains five percent or to more like 15 percent zinc the next material is bronze bronze it is a reddish brown color and it is a hot but had a brittleness material which is um, easy to break and have a melting point of 950 degrees celsius and also has a high resistance to corrosion from salt water and the last material is plastics plastics is light and chemically stable and it is easily to be molded and different shapes and sizes it is also a good impact resistance and do not rust but the problem is the material is pro dimensional stability and easily to be deformed and the next subtopic is about why we should take a consideration of picking a material to minimize the environment impact the location in which you live is in an important factors when choosing the best building materials for your object if you live in a wet rainy area then it's important to protect your home from excess moisture mold and rot will be very real concern on the other hand if you live in a dry area of the country that is prone to forest fries then fire resistance becomes an important element in the building materials you choose from a manufacturing point of view an increase in the production is good because it reduces manufacturing costs but in terms of environmental impact the increase in energy consumption leads to an increase in carbon dioxide emission the environment impact of a manufacturing process is also depend on the selection of the material and the design of the product this is because the manufacturing of a product is directly connected to the amount of carbon emitted to com consuming the electrical energy for that manufacturing process and that's all for us and thank you for your time we hope the information that we just gave to you guys is useful for the future and is useful goods for the uh, upcoming generation or the society in the future. Thank you so much.